Today's event brings together key members of the public and private sector, along with leading members of our community from across the Liverpool City region. What we're trying to do today is to get a better understanding of what the future energy challenges are that our city region faces and that our national economy faces and how we can make the most of those challenges. In terms of social and economic issues, energy is up there with education, health uh, and crime. I think all of us require electricity obviously to power our homes and heat to heat our, our houses. The way we power under the country is a confusing issue because we're quite aware of some of the implications of running out of oil, fossil fuels and the impact on climate change etc. It's vital to the success of our economy but there's also massive impacts on the social welfare of people in terms of the cost of energy and where they're going to get energy from in the future. This is called the British Energy Challenge and this is a pretty hefty challenge I can tell you. Within one hour you, the good folks of Liverpool, are going to decarbonise the entire UK economy, or at least to the extent of reducing our emissions by 80% by 2050. What we've got here is an amazing presentational tool which has been developed by DEC. So what we have to do is to make a pathway, all of us today, which adds up. And the calculator does this for us. What we're seeing here is a live website. It's got three main charts up here, which I'll just briefly talk you through. On the left hand is a chart showing the UK energy demand uh, across time, starting with today, going out towards 2050. And on the vertical axis is the units, which is terawatt hours per year. In the middle is where do we get our energy from? Um, same unit, same scale. We can see that this bulky bit at the bottom, natural gas. We're mainly a gas economy in the UK. And the right hand chart, shows our greenhouse gas emissions, which is the other element that DEC cares about. DEC cares a lot about keeping the lights on, and it cares a lot about uh, protecting the planet and tackling climate change. So what the calculator does is it gives you a bunch of choices, uh, running down in the middle column of the things that might be obvious about energy supply, the left-hand column about energy demand. There are um, hundreds of thousands of ways we can tackle climate change. So no one choice here is critical to tackling climate change. So we can, what we're looking for is to understand what people actually want to happen. But bearing in mind that all of these individually are optional, but collectively we have to make some tricky trade-offs. Now I'm a married man, so I have a quite a warm home. Um, <laughs> warmer than I did have when I was a bachelor. And I don't mean to be sexist, but um, the more people you have in the house, the higher the temperature tends to go to make everyone comfortable. We've got um, quite a unique selling point in Merseyside. We've got quite a lot of fuel poverty. And some of the issues for that is due to the ageing population who need the higher temperatures. I want to go on to supply. Um, does anybody think that offshore wind is simply, I don't know, either horrible or a waste of money or anything like that? Or are you all pretty pro-wind here? We're living with the construction of them at the moment. And, and uh, I think everybody enjoys seeing the ships coming in, loading up and getting out there. Um, you solve part of your distribution problem by building them near the largest centres of population. Uh, you, you build them in the Irish Sea, you've got Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham within an hour, an hour or so of the, of the port of Liverpool. Why is the Black Line not going anywhere near our 80% reduction target? So the key thing here is that we're still using gas and oil mainly for these uh, heating systems and the transport over there. We've got a question which is about how much the UK do we dedicate to growing bio crops? The extreme level is that we basically put 20% of the UK land area is replaced with miscanthus crops, taller than you are. All right, we're going to have to have a vote on this. How much UK land area are we going to devote to bioenergy? Uh, who wants number one? About the same amount of energy crops as today. There's quite a few. Who wants number two? Which is, all right, number two then. Cool. Look, we're getting to the end of our time here. What are we going to do, Tom? But we're still, in this world, not tackling climate change. So one of the key decisions we need to make, though, is about electrifying transport or electrifying uh, heating or industry. I think electrification and combined heat and power, because again, it depends on locality and resource. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of industry in, in the Liverpool city region that we can capitalise on. How come we've just hit the target? What did you just do? I was turning... So electrified both sorts of... I, I just electrified oh. both sorts of heating, so both our commercial properties and our homes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've just decarbonised the UK. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> My opinion on energy has changed after the discussion. I was really quite excited by the fact that we can generate enough energy for, for our needs going forward. I have learnt a lot more 
and I've thought a lot more about the impact, um, particularly when they were looking at the kind of visuals on the map, about actually what that means in practice. What I've come to realise more is that how complex and interrelated everything is and how there is no one solution, whether it's wind power or nuclear or carbon capture and storage or on the demand side it's about whether we electrify vehicles or houses or have you know, combined heat and power and district network systems. There is no one solution and that it's a whole mix of solutions that are actually going to transform the UK economy into a low carbon economy.